What's up everybody, this is Adam here at engineeringsolve.com. I have another tool here, it's a basic retirement calculator. Now if I may put a little disclaimer up front, I am not a financial professional and uh, none of the finance tools that you find on my website uh, should be used um, officially. Um, they're for general use only and based on uh, just general information that can be found throughout the internet. So let's just cover my butt here for a second. Anyway, moving on. So let's say you want to figure out, you're a young professional, and you want to figure out, okay, I want to retire at age 60. Uh, you know, I make $35,000 a year. I have uh, a little bit safe for retirement so far, uh, but not a lot. And I'm thinking, okay, this is so far out in the future. How in the world do I figure this out you know I definitely know that I don't want to work forever uh, but it just seems so um, so scary uh, to figure this all out so this is a little easy little tool thing that I developed for you I hope you guys out so let's move through the tool here so let's say you're 25 you make $35,000 a year you want to retire at age 60 the current year right now as I record this is 2016 uh, let's say you have $1,000 in your work 401k plan and you have, let's say you've been saving a little bit uh, since high school and maybe in a Roth IRA and you have maybe 2500 in that tax-free. Uh, also, okay, let's moving down. Uh, let's say you currently put in 6% into your uh, traditional 401k at work and your company matches dollar for dollar up to that amount. So then they would also put in 6% on top. Uh, let's, if you're, uh, let's see, okay, so your Roth IRA contribution per month still is $100 a month. Um, this traditional is taxable, but if you're young, it's it's probably recommended to, to, um, to do the Roth option. It's probably a better option. Um, but you didn't hear that from me. Um, <laughs> so let's say you're putting in $100 a month. You could split it up and put it put a little bit in both. Uh, but the sum total of these two cannot be more than a uh, uh, single amount, I think, in 2016. It's $5,500 a year per person. Uh, so I think that's about $458 a month. So the sum total of these as of 2016 cannot be more than 458. And I I don't believe if I built that in here, let's let's put in 400 to be at 500. So yeah, you have to be mindful of that cuz the total of these is 500 that's above the annual uh amount that's allowed uh, per the government, the, the US government. Um so you have to be mindful of that. Let's just leave it at $100 for right now. Uh, now here, this is your investment style. Now there's two uh, main things I've I've heard about uh, recently. It's your, um, your investment um, capacity or your risk capacity versus your risk tolerance. Uh, let's say your risk capacity because you're young is high because you have a long time uh, to recover any losses that may happen. And then it, say you're older and your risk capacity will be much lower because say you want to retire in five or 10 years, you're in your 50s or 60s and uh, your capacity for loss just isn't there anymore. Um, and then your this is mainly focusing on your risk tolerance though. Um, so if you're young, you're a go-getter, you want to be aggressive, you say, I want to do this at 60 or earlier. Let's go get it. You know, let's work for it. Let's work towards it. You're probably going to be aggressive. And that will uh, skew the Monte Carlo simulation more towards stocks. Uh, now, out of these three boxes here, uh, only one of them should have yes at any time. If you put in no, uh, you see there's an error. But if we put in yes under moderate, it will recalculate. Okay, let's change this back here. Okay, moving on. 
Okay, so this minimum minimum income replacement is uh, when you retire, let's say you make $100,000 a year, you've worked your way up the corporate ladder, you know, I don't know, you're 55 or 60 and you've done well for yourself. At the, at the moment you retire, that following year you'd probably target around 80% of your pre-retirement income as a withdrawal from your accounts. And that's that's a that's a debatable recommendation uh, in the finance industry. Um, I'm not making that recommendation uh, one way or the other at this at this point. Um, that's up to you to figure out on your own. Uh, but let's leave that at eighty just for just for example. Now the withdrawal rate of total savings. This should be much smaller because you only want to take out a little bit of your savings every year. So uh, 80% of your pre-retirement income should be about maybe 4% of your total savings in retirement at retirement age. So it's, again, if you make $100,000 a year, your uh, your total saving, your I'm sorry, your total income replacement would be $80,000 a year. And if you divide that by 4%, that's about $2 million in total savings. And you can figure that out too. There's a ratio. If you divide it by 80% divided by 4%, you can get a multiplier of 20. And if you take 20 times your uh, annual gross income or AGI, and if, if it's $100,000, that would be $2 million at retirement age. So that's a quick and dirty you know, rule of thumb. It's very debatable in the industry, but it gives you a good idea where you stand. Now, if you look at the results here, uh, the age of retirement is 2051. So it's just 2016 plus 35 years uh, based on 60 minus 25. Projected age of retirement is 60 right here. Uh, probability of retiring early is around 15%. Uh, it's a little low, at least for my my taste. Um, you may be comfortable with that. You may want to, I don't know, maybe around 50% or 75%, and you can adjust the figures on the left here to try to bring that up, see what you gotta see what you gotta change or see what you gotta modify a little bit uh, to bring that up. And then it splits out your taxable and tax-free savings at retirement: uh, 1.6 million and 300,000. Uh, total savings is about $2 million, so that's pretty close uh, to probably what you would need based on the example. Now, if you, this assumes that your uh, AGI would increase every year at about the rate of inflation. So I don't know what that is. I don't know what 35,000 times, I don't know, 35 years of 2 or 3% inflation is offhand, but I'm assuming it's maybe... I don't know. I'm not even going to say. You guys can figure that out on your own. But it, it all does it internally here. Actually, let's see if we have it here. Uh, gross income, 35000 Age of retirement is 60. So it's about 152000 So it's pretty close. See? Yeah, it's pretty close. Now at this point, your age is 25. And if you look at this graph... Uh, your total retirement savings uh, goes up exponentially uh, based on compound interest, of course. Um, and then at, at this point, this red line, this is your retirement distribution income. So your 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to retirement age, 60. And then it shoots up, and it's on the secondary axis here. It's around, I don't know, $75,000 a year is your with first year withdrawal for income, the year you uh, retire from your career. And then that rises with inflation as well as the balance of your account. So you see here your account kind of flattens out after retirement because you're taking money out. And then as inflation creeps up this value, your withdrawal rate, um, your account starts to decrease um, and then 
the inflation rate of the withdrawal eventually overpowers the growth rate of the market of your total savings as well as the withdrawals and then your account starts to accelerate downward you know as you take more and more out to account for inflation so here uh, you have years in retirement until broke which is kind of a scary scary thought uh, but you here I mean if you save two million dollars you generate uh, two and a half times almost two and a half times uh, times that two and a quarter times that amount in income so that's nice so you, you save two million dollars but you take it out over the course of 34 years all the time it's still growing and you take out more than twice that so that's that's a pretty nice figure to to realize to keep in mind and then here you have a kind of a sorry but you have a kind of a morbid thing uh age went broke so this is when you've totally depleted all of your retirement savings this is around 94. so this seems a little young to me honestly uh in my personal opinion i may want to have that maybe 100 or 110 and that's all subjective i mean who knows uh, you can you can play around with that if you want uh, but that's about it that's about it guys there's a little disclaimer down here if you want to read it um as always you can visit my site at engineeringsolve.com where you can see find this tool for free free uh, download as well as many other tools in finance and uh, mechanical engineering uh, arena so thanks a lot see you later